This, I think, is the single creepiest thing I've ever seen. So right now, Dalton School, which is a very posh private school, $55,000 a year to attend. The Dalton School has been caught uh, teaching little kids to pleasure themselves. So it's not, it's not even just the, the broader ideology of LGBT and the sexual revolution. It's actually instructing them that it is good to pleasure themselves. So that the director of health and wellness, Justine Ang Fonte, at the, at the Dalton School is now being reported by the New York Post, uh, instructing six-year-olds during her sex ed class to, to touch themselves because it feels good. There's All right, the, the vision of the anointed. Now, that's, a, that's an interesting title. Who are the anointed? They are the elite in the media, in, the, in politics. Uh, all of those who think that third parties ought to be making people's decisions for them. The subtitle is self-congratulation as a basis for social policy. In other words, people who think that everything that's wrong with the, econ- the country is due to the fact that other people are just not as smart as they are. And if only they could, you know, or people like them could take over and make our decisions, we'd be so much better off. But in the early, in early America, didn't this sort of educated class make the decisions for everybody? W- as far as governmental decisions, yeah. but the government itself didn't make uh, the decisions for everyone. Uh-huh. Now, uh, you know, you, you can't decide where your kid's going to school. You can't decide whether or not they can move a, a halfway house for drug, for drug users next door to you or whatnot. It's out but, of your control. The government that, decides that's that That's right. Stuff. The government decides too many things. They decide also how your children will be raised. Uh, you may have an idea about how, at what age children should be introduced to sex and in what manner, with what kind of moral commitment. You mean as a parent? You as have a this... parent, a parent, yes. Uh, the schools have taken that over. By the time you even think about it, they've already had years, you know, of showing... They're passing out condoms to these kids. Passing even out condoms you... is not, not even the half of it. Uh, they're, they're showing uh, motion pictures of naked couples engaging in sex, both homosexual and heterosexual, in the seventh grade. And if you complain about it, that's, that's considered to be censorship. You don't, you, you can't pull your kid out of school and say they don't have to put up with this stuff? I guess you could, no. but you'd be... Uh... Well, if you have a private school to put him in, but you have compulsory attendance laws, and if you don't have the money for private schools, then you're stuck. Where did this country get off the track and decide that the federal government should make most of our decisions? Well, it started to some extent in the New Deal, but I think the 1960s is sort of the golden age, if you want to put it that way, of this whole mindset. And that's what the book's about. It's about a mindset. It's not about a series of policies but of showing how in policy after policy, those who think a certain way will uh, try to take over other people's decisions. I realized that the best way to talk about sexuality and um, LGBT plus education actually is to teach it in context. You don't want to stick it on a power pit above the other equalities. Uh, it's, no, it's no more important than race, religion, disability, sex. It's also no less important. Now, there's nothing in them outside us about sex. Uh, there's nothing about how babies are made. No outside it's a primary school resource aimed at four-year-olds to 11-year-olds, which teaches children about difference and diversity and prepares them for life in modern Britain where they're gonna meet people who are different. Every child understands what it means to be left out and no child wants to be left out. So children like them outsiders because it gives them a, a, a strength, an inner strength that they understand that they won't be left out. Well, but when the figures rise as dramatically as they have done by 15 percentage points, mm-hmm. what is it that's happening now that wasn't happening then? Just plain more sex, more teenage sex? Yes, and that, that's happening, uh, I think, in the society at large. It's part of the general degeneration of standards in American society. Well, would a corollary of your proposition that the more we engage in affirmative action, the less we succeed be that the more we teach sex education, the less we learn? Oh, ab- absolutely. That, uh, what, what, what is amazing to me is how many propositions there are that are sacred without a speck of evidence and an utter defiance of all evidence that w- sex education was promoted on the grounds that this will reduce illegitimacy. illegitimacy, teenage pregnancy, which I think is more important than the legal status of the children, and it would also reduce venereal disease. Uh, and of course, it was instituted, and teenage pregnancy and venereal disease have shot up through the roof. Mm-hmm. I have seen practically no one say, let us reconsider this. Uh, we, have, we have become wedded to certain non-empirical propositions that no matter what happens, these doctrines are so, and they are not to be questioned. So that if we, if we don't succeed with affirmative action, we need more affirmative action. I was told that this very morning. <laughs> 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 it reminded me of the alcoholic who, who wakes up with a hangover and figures he has to have a drink to get over this. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
Yes, the, the, there's a tremendous range of these things, not only in the racial area, but uh, throughout the whole social thinking today. This, I think, is the single creepiest thing I've ever seen. I, I don't think that's an exaggeration. You've got these little cartoon kitty voices talking about sex and uh, as Woody Allen says, sex with someone you love, right? Sex in the privacy of your own room. And then this teacher saying, well, it's good. It's okay. It's totally fine to do that in private, but you don't always want to do that in public. Now, this is part of the sex ed class at Dalton. The reason I even play it is not just how shocking and creepy it is, but it's to show what this is really about. Because the education that's being conveyed in this video is not just sexual education. There's a little bit of sexual education. Here's this body part. Here's this body part. But it goes much further than that. It's morality education. It's religious education. Because what this woman is saying is, look, given the laws of our society, it's not okay to do these sorts of things in public. But it's perfectly okay to do these sorts of things in private. That's a moral teaching. That's a religious teaching. That's not the Christian understanding of it. The Christian teaching is it's not okay to do that in private. Jewish understanding, as far as I know, I'm no expert, not okay to do that. Muslim understanding, it's not okay to do that in private. But the leftist understanding is it is okay. It's actually good. You should be doing it. This goes back way, way far back. This goes back almost a hundred years to theorists like Wilhelm Reich, very creepy sexual and political theorist who said that all the problems of the world from war to disease are caused by a lack of orgasms. Seriously. Uh, he, he had, he had an or, uh, orgone accumulator is what he called it. It was a, like an orgasm box where, uh, many very intelligent leftists bought these boxes and sat in them. I don't know what they did. I don't, I don't want to know what they did in those boxes. Uh, but, but these theories were very popular. Bernie Sanders adopted them in the 1960s. He wrote creepy essays about it that he published in the uh, Vermont Freeman, I think the name is. I actually talk about this at some length in my upcoming book, Speechless, Controlling Words, Controlling Minds, available now for pre-order. You can get a signed first edition of Premier Collectibles. There was a very creepy focus on the need to sexualize kids. And the reason is, if you really believe that sexual repression is the cause of all these problems in the world, then you can't wait until people uh, embrace the oppression. You can't, can't wait until people decide they are going to repress themselves. You've got to get them at their very youngest point. And so you've got to go into the schools and you've got to indoctrinate kids in this radical sexual ideology. It's creepy, it's pervy, but for the left, it serves a political purpose. So you got the left focusing on this really, really creepy sex stuff. And to give them their credit, it's not just because they're perverts. It does have a political purpose. Uh, ginning up lust, ginning up uh, licentiousness, lecherousness, all, all this sort of stuff is uh, designed to control you politically. 